Right then, last night, England lost to Italy in a penalty shootout in the final of the Euro 2020 Championships uh, held in 2021. And for me, I was disappointed in the end. Um, I have grown to like this England team. I don't fully get taken on board with it and I don't fully feel it as if I'm watching United. But obviously it's football in this country and it affects what we do it affects what we do as United fans and it affects what we do just as, as football fans living in this country. The fallout's been disgusting as usual. Um, and I'm, it's sadly not even surprising. We want to talk about blame and who's to blame in this. And the, the lack of desire for people to, to analyze and ask questions and be solely focused on results. And because people are solely focused on results, they've been reluctant to analyse some of the things that have been going wrong throughout the tournament, some of the decisions made by Gareth Southgate throughout the tournament, and some of the 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 tactical and selection decisions that he's made have been poor. I did a video at the start of the tournament saying England will fail. Now, there's no gloating here on that. It was a statement that I made. I've been right before. I've been wrong before. The odds was always in my favour to be right on making a video like that. It wasn't the intention of the making a video to just go, ha ha, I was right. It was more to sort of open people's eyes up to the fact that England are not a big team. England are not a team that traditionally, and they did exceed my expectations, I'll give them that, not traditionally a team that competes for or wins silverware in international competition. And they, they never have been, even in 66, they were very, very fortunate to have got through when they did. England had good performances against teams they were expected to beat. They was very fortunate with the draw that they got. They they had an excellent performance against Germany. And I actually think one of the big things that this team did was they made it look so easy. And I think that lulled people, in, people into a false sense of security as they came into the final and was going to come up against a very good Italy team. The final started sensationally well. What a goal by Luke Shaw. The technical ability to keep the shot down. That fired up three minutes into a game where you just bombed into the box as a fullback. Nothing but credit. Brilliant finish. Well taken goal. Well set up. But from that point, England retreated. And Gav Southgate only acted on any sort of changes once Italy scored. And those changes weren't to redress the balance and try and win the game. They just seem to settle for the draw. Now, I've been questioning his decision-making and his substitutions all the way through, and a lot of the comments that come back, and I'm not sure these are United fans, are people saying, where's the same energy for when Solskjaer does this? Well, when has Solskjaer done this? You can question, and you should question sometimes, the use of maybe Donny van der Beek. You can question the, his use of certain players, but there has never been a time when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has had Grealish, Rashford and Sancho equivalents, let alone those three players, on the bench. No, because here's one thing with Solskjaer. Is that sometimes I try and guess what he's going to do in, try and, in terms of picking a team. He won't leave himself without a certain position on the bench. Ever. Sadly. Sometimes that's why sometimes you'll see Greenwood on the bench when he's in good form, but no one else is available, so he has to be there as a possible game changer later on in the game, rather than sometimes going with it from the start. The non-selection of Calvert Lewin for a couple of those games was mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And when it gets to extra time penalties, you want someone like a Calvert Lewin on the pitch, especially if a game is fractured and. You've got Harry Kane. Harry Kane being a playmaker and not being a forward. Well, guess what? We've got playmakers. Go be a forward. You're not on the pitch to be a playmaker. You're on the pitch to be a centre forward and he wasn't a good centre forward. I thought he played well as in terms of himself. And this is my issue with the whole analysis of everything. When England were winning, everyone seems to just think everything Southgate did worked, so it's beyond question. And it wasn't the case. He was winning in spite of making a ton of mistakes that I was certain was going to come and bite him on the ass. And I wasn't on my own in that. There was a lot of people going, well, yeah, I mean, he got through. But listen, the Germany game, 
Very fortunate. XG in that game was identical. 2 0 flat in England in a big way. Germany had a, you know, they had a, a large say in that game and it could have gone either way. It wasn't like we wiped the floor with them. Not perhaps like the Ukraine game. Favourable draw, find yourself in a final. And it was a winnable final. Italy, without Spinozola, didn't start Locatelli. They were there for the taking, really. The first, you score the first goal, and it mirrors for me a lot of what happened in the World Cup semi final. You take the lead, and then you don't have the tactical know how to be able to hold on to that or double it. And it seemed to me lack of brave decision making from Southgate. And I've not even got to the penalties yet. So Southgate, to his credit, has come up and he's owned his mistake in this. But England will not get a better chance to win some international silverware. Now, if they'd have got through against Croatia, I still think they got twatted by France. England were a goal away for a long period of time away from being champions of Europe. One goal. Minutes away. You have match winners in Grealish, Sancho and Rashford on the bench. Grealish gets on a touch earlier. <laughs> Sancho and Rashford get one minute. Now, for me, this is a big thing. It's cowardly. And it also is about trust. How can you say you trust Rashford and you trust Sancho to come on and win you the fucking game if you can't trust them to play in the fucking game? Let alone asking a 19-year-old to take, this is an important distinction, not just the winning penalty, the score it or it's over penalty. There's a big distinction in that. Taking a winning penalty, there's a lot of people who put their hand up for that. The miss it and it's over penalty. That's a big, big ask. I'm not sure a 19-year-old's the one to be taking that. Now, I saw Grealish come out and say, I wanted to take a penalty. I'm glad that he's come out and said that. And Southgate said, no, I made that decision. Now, I've got to look at his track record with younger players. His decision-making over what he did with Greenwood and what he did with Foden when they had a girl in their room, didn't like that. Did not like that at the time. Didn't like his decision to be able to be putting Mason Greenwood in a press conference. Did not like that. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying sack him, because to be honest, I don't really care. And also... I don't see who necessarily comes in and does a much better job. But a guy went into this game like he was still manager of Middlesbrough, not like he had the attacking talent to go and win the game. He's never had the bottle to be the England manager. He was a safe appointment. And unfortunately, being safe gets you fucking nowhere. You need bravery, and he ain't it. And for me, England had a brilliant opportunity. For me, not not the best England side ever, although by record, it's the best England side since 66. I don't think anyone's coming and saying that. But it is, and it could have been the first one to pick up some silverware since 66. But the manager got in the way. Couldn't get out of his own way. And England fucked it. And our creatures, which make it hard to want to follow this England team, racially abusing the players that had the bottle to stand up there and take a penalty. This is why you just think, fuck. You know what I mean? There's a phrase that United fans have got. You can stick your fucking England up your ass. Sideways. Laters.